Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the DXF import utility from the Autodesk App Store. So once you've downloaded and installed it, you may have to come in here. So again, on the Tools, Add-ins, uh, in the Scripts and Add-ins dialog, click on Add-ins, and you should see it here in the list, DXF Importer. If it's not already running, which would be indicated by these circles, uh, go ahead, select it, and click Run. You'll now see an icon here for DXF Import. There's also an option here called Close Sketch Gaps, which we'll get to in a second. But first, let's go ahead and just use the tool uh, with kind of the default. So, so first prompted to select the DXF files we want to place in the design. So we'll just go ahead and grab a couple of these. Select Open. And we'll see some options here. I'll go through some of these options here in a minute. Um, but in general, what this is going to do is going to create a Fusion 360 component for each DXF file. And then we can do things like extrude the profile. So in this case, I'm going to take each, uh, each DXF file and extrude its profile to some thickness. Um, combined to a single sketch is another one, which basically means if you have multiple layers in the DXF file, each one by default would be imported to a separate sketch in the component. By selecting this option, you can combine all the layers into a single sketch. And then we're also going to import text. So in this case, these files have some etching text. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the text out of the DXF file, but then we're going to apply specifically a Fusion 360 font. So it's going to look at the size and the placement of the text, but then it's actually going to create Fusion 360 specific sketch text with this font. And then we'll talk about some of these other options in a minute. So here you can see that the three DXF files were imported. Three components were created in my tree. You can also see the text here that was in the original DXF files has been imported and then set as a new Fusion sketch on the top faces of the components. So now let's take a look at some of the other options in here. So again, let's start a new file. I'm gonna go in here, run this DXF import. Now, in this one, let's grab a couple that I know have some problems. I'm going to uncheck this option, Reset Sketch Origins, and Extrude, and Combine. We won't worry about material or text or closing the sketches. Now let's go ahead and import this without these options and see what we get. So now we can look here. If we look at these sketches, we can see that there's some problems with these. You just happen to know that there are. If you look at this sketch, um, you can see that there's actually like, there's no profile. So in Fusion 360, you can see there's the circles are shaded, letting you know that's a closed profile. In the case of these, they are not shaded, indicating it's not a closed profile, which means that you would not be able to extrude it. And be, the reason for that is that there's, you know, very tiny gaps between the ends of these arcs. And this is a common problem in DXF files. So you can see I can actually uh, kind of drag these around. Some of them might have gaps. So this one had a gap. You can see that it was, if I drag one to the end of this, it is not attached. And a lot of times to fix it, what you end up doing is kind of dragging and snapping until you can go through this and fix it up until you get to the point where eventually, if you do enough of these, but you're kind of destroying the geometry. So you don't really want to do that. So let's go ahead and do that again. And we'll just click on this command again. And let's select a couple of these again. They all have the same problem with the tiny gaps at the ends of the arcs. So this time, uh, I'm going to set this option, Reset Sketch Origins. Now what this does is sometimes the origin in the DXF file is like way off in space. What this is going to do is it's going to try to move the sketch such that the bottom left of its bounding box is at the origin of the sketch. It basically just cleans it up and just moves things so that they're all like tighter packed. But the most important thing here is we want to extrude it. And so to do that, what we're going to need to do is close sketches. So I'm going to have close sketches turned on. And then this tolerance basically says any two points that are within this distance of each other, just merge them together. And then hopefully we should end up with is some closed profiles that can be extruded. Uh, another thing in here is, is that you'll notice I was always prompted, select the DXF files you want. If you want to turn that off, you can also uncheck this and save settings. So we'll say OK. And now let's go ahead and import those same profiles again. 
and we'll see the difference in the result. You could also see that when it was initially importing, the sketches were way off in space, and so we were resetting their origins, and you can see that the closed sketch gap has created a closed profile that can now be extruded. So again, if you look at one of these, you can see the shaded profile means that it worked and the gaps were closed and now you can have a closed profile that can be extruded. The last little trick I wanted to show in here is if you want to apply a material. So before I import, what you need to do to apply a material with this import utility is just pick on the top component in an empty file or whatever select physical material. Let's say that I was going to import this and I wanted them, I wanted to apply um, a specific aluminum to all of these. So let's go with whatever, aluminum uh, 5005. Go ahead and I'm going to apply that to this component. All that's really done is it's added it to the design. So you can see in this design now I have this as an option. Uh, just to kind of show it, I'll just add another one in here. Let's go ahead and add brass just for fun. I'm going to say close. Now when I come and I run the import utility, now, when I come into this dialog box in this dropdown, I'll see that I have those materials available to me. So for a number of reasons, that's the way this works. If you want to apply a material during import, you first have to add the material to the current design in the way that I just showed. And then here, we could have select aluminum or uh, brass or the steel. So let's go ahead and pick that aluminum. And now you can see that that material has been applied. And again, with our closed sketches and reset origins, we have a very nice looking cleaned up version of this. And if we, again, if we look at the material properties, we can see that the material is aluminum 5005. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully this utility helps you out a lot. You know, we've got a lot of new capabilities in Fusion 360 around nesting and arranging parts. And for those of you guys who are dealing with lots of DXF files, hopefully this utility will really help to uh, streamline that workflow and get a whole bunch of DXFs in and just kind of set up in a nice way that you can then use them as the input for nesting and arranging and whatnot. Thank you very much.